Obviously, today is uh, signing day, National Signing Day, and uh, we were uh, excited about uh, the results of, um, you know, a, a very long uh, and, uh, you know, clearly a successful uh, signing day for, for our football program. Uh, there's so many people to thank, our entire operations uh, that, that go into this, so many people uh, when you talk about recruiting from uh, logistical planning, uh, flights and uh, rental cars, uh, hotels. I mean, I, I could go on and on to uh, recruiting weekends, uh, to planning our entire recruiting staff, uh, led by J.R. Benton, Will Redmond, and personnel. Um, you know, I think I think there's just so many people to to thank that um, I'll miss somebody if I don't bring them up, but those two in particular and uh, have done a great job of um, putting this class together. Uh, Frank Wilson, our recruiting coordinator, um, and, and then our entire coaching staff. Um, they're, they're so um, integral in, in this day as well. But we're excited about the 27 uh, total signees, 26 high school players, you know, one junior college uh, player today. Um, 14 of them will enroll uh, in January, which uh, obviously gives us a, a great opportunity to develop those players uh, through uh, the winter um, conditioning program and certainly get them acclimated academically, uh, socially, and, and put them in a good position um, from a time management standpoint so that when we get into the summer and you know preseason camp, they're, they're a lot more uh, comfortable uh, being in college. Um, 20 of the signees uh, have Louisiana roots, uh, 16 from here, born and raised, four from um, moved out of the state. So a, a great connection with the state of Louisiana. And then eight out of the 10 of the highest rated uh, prospects uh, by many of the uh, 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 publications that, that do in fact um, rate them. So, you know, where are we after three recruiting cycles? We've we've uh, brought in 64 uh, freshmen into our program. I think, you know, I've said this um, since I got here. We're going to build this program on freshmen. Um, last year, you know, we had to um, bring in a number of transfers because that was necessary for where the program was. This year, we've brought in two. So you can see the, the shift and transition towards developing our players, um, giving them the opportunity to grow within our program, and then we have to put them on the field. Uh, we had some young players that have to play this year, and there's some growing pains that go along with that. But um, I'm committed to um, that growth and that, that, that kind of development, and I think in the long run uh, it proves to be the way to championships and – continuity and consistency within your program. Um, you know, I think some of the, you know, things that are also um, important to point out is, um, you know, from a, a position breakdown, we've got great balance, offense, defense, uh, you know, special teams. Um, again, uh, I, I think that, you know, when we talk about recruiting, where is your focus? Our focus is on the state of Louisiana. Our focus is on freshmen. Um, and, our, and our focus is on um, a well-rounded student athlete that recognizes the value of a degree from LSU and wants to play for championships. And so that will be reflected uh, in this class. So with that, we'll open up to questions. Uh, hey, Coach. Um, you had mentioned those numbers. Uh, 23 of the 27 signees are from Louisiana and Texas, pretty much East Texas. I was just curious, obviously, those are hot spots for talent, but in the portal era and retention, your view on recruiting areas like that where do you think guys are more likely to stick it out if they're close to home, parents drive to games, that kind of thing? Were you correcting me? Was I correcting you? Yeah, no, no, no. I was actually. Did I, no, was I, wrong? I was adding. I wasn't wrong. I was adding it was, Texas it was into Mike it. It was Mike that was well. wrong. If anybody is wrong no, factually that, today, 
just, just. I'm pregnant. I wasn't correct. I was adding the Texas. Oh, you were adding okay. the 23 of uh, 27 uh, from the two certainly. states. I'm just curious if, yeah, if I, you I think that, that may help with retention. Yeah, I, I really do believe that there is um, a loyalty and a sense of growing up. Uh, and wanting to play for LSU. I, I really believe that there's that, that passion. And I think it's not just LSU. I think, you know, when I was in the Midwest, I, I was at Cincinnati. I mean, that, that same sense is that I, they wanted to be a Buckeye, right? They wanted to play for Ohio State. And, and, and I think that that geographically is in, you know, some of the passionate states about football. And I think that's clearly here in Lu the state of Louisiana, that, that young boys grow up to young men that want to play for LSU. So I think that's real. And, and so we recognize that. And if, if they possess the traits from a football standpoint and from a character standpoint and an academic standpoint, um, darn right, we're going to recruit them. Absolutely. Coach, you mentioned uh, building through freshmen, but was there, as far as interior defensive tackles, was there a debate about transfer portal guys there and the fact there are none is that a tell that all your guys are coming back next year Ooh, tricky question to the to the tricky one in there um so the junior college player uh sean montgomery we really kind of satisf satisfied that that piece uh kind of early on before the transfer portal even got busy so we used him as kind of the model like, if somebody is of that caliber of a player or better, maybe we'd be interested. Um, and, and we feel good about retention. Um, and so I think both of those things factored into where we're at at the defensive tackle position. Uh, C Coach, you mentioned that you guys have added uh, two guys from the transfer portal. Does that mean you're allowed to talk about Jarden and um, Xavion? Yeah, we like we're trying to keep this as freshmen, uh, and and the one junior college player shown, and then we'll get to those guys on Friday. We'd like to make this their day today. Okay, okay, that's good to know. Um, and uh, with the freshman, with a guy like Deshaun McBride, um, yeah. what what does he sort of bring to the table with with the secondary, and what sort of was appealing um, for you guys about him? Well, outside of uh, length and athleticism. Um, you know, the safety position is, is one of, of need within our program. You just look at the numbers on the depth chart. Um, first um, student athlete uh, that plays football that has graduated from Denham Springs early. Um, so he's a terrific student, high character, you know, has all the traits that we're looking for. So not only he's got length, um, he's... Uh, really brings the kind of uh, safety presence that we're looking for in terms of being able to cover a number two receiver, but also a great tackler. Um, it's a great student and um, a great young man. Uh, you look at some of the you know, areas where you guys recruited defensively, it looks like there's a lot of positional versatility. I'm just curious if, if that's a situation where you, know, you got guys like McBride and uh, Tylen Singleton, my, my, uh, Michael Turner, just just guys that can come in and maybe be, you know, start at one position and then maybe you know just depending on need and where their best fit is. Is that something that you guys targeted as guys that can maybe fill multiple spots for you guys? I think what what the the charge there was um, toughness, uh, versatility, um, and and the ability to develop. These are all young men that are going to get bigger, faster, and stronger. They have not tapped out in terms of that. And so in, in the, as we talk about player development, we, we want, you know, uh, the ability to watch these young men uh, grow within our program as well. So um, I, I think that that has to be considered as well. So if you see somebody that's, you know, 205 pounds, you can assume that these guys are going to get bigger, faster, and stronger, um, but they have, you know, obviously some elite uh, traits already, and we hope to build on that. 
Coach, if I could ask about a couple of local guys kind of from the same area there. Trey Des Green, uh, football is still relatively new to him, right? Yeah. And uh, Joel Rogers. Yeah. Uh, he said he wouldn't mind a few offensive touches too. But uh, on the safety side of the ball, him as well. Yeah, another impressive, impressive young man in, in Rogers in safety position. But, again, a great athlete um, and tough. I mean, he played with – you know, a shoulder injury that uh, obviously got repaired after the season. Um, just again, high character, great student, um, and and really liked all of the other facets about him. And he's an outstanding football player. Another neat position for us locally, Tredes Green. Um, just starting to scratch the surface in terms of what he can do uh, as a football player. I thought his jump from last year to this year of understanding the game and it coming easy to him was probably um, as, as big as anyone that I've seen in one year. I, generally, it takes longer for somebody that's just played the game uh, to pick up the nuances of the game, but you could spread him out as a receiver uh, from last year to this year and his, his awareness, his body control, uh, the things that he did from last year to this year was, was pretty remarkable. Brian, over here, y'all signed four corners and you get Sage Ryan to decide not to come out of the transfer portal. So first, kind of where do you see Sage moving forward? And also now with all of that, how do you feel about the cornerback position moving forward? I feel good about it. I mean, you know, certainly, um, you know, Jay Van Toviano, um, Ashton Stamps, Jeremiah Hughes, um, Sage, you know, you've got four corners there. Um, you know, uh, Jair's coming back from an injury. Um, you know, you've got some depth there. You've got freshmen coming in. I think we're, 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 we're stabilizing a position that was not very stable. And, and we've got Zay, or Zai coming back uh, as well, who was a starter for us. Uh, there's depth there. There's athleticism. That was not the case, obviously, uh, over the last couple of years. So what we're starting to see is a, a stabilization and depth within the program that, that really was devoid of that. And, and I think that's why you didn't see us jumping into the portal. We, we really want to be able to develop these younger players. And, and, and again, I, I feel confident in our ability to do that and, and have them ready to play championship football in the SEC. Hey, Coach. Um, so, like you mentioned, you guys had to start a lot of true freshmen in the secondary this season. With the freshmen that you did sign today, is the expectation higher than it, than it was, or is it about the same? Where do you stand with from the experience you had this season? So, I, I've told them all to have a mindset of coming in and competing. I'm going to play the best 11 players, um, whoever they might be. Um, so, I think there's a lot of physical talent in this group. Um, how do you handle the transition? You know, mentally, you have to be prepared. Uh, and sometimes that's the biggest challenge coming in as a freshman. Are you ready mentally to play? Because I think physically, most of these guys can compete right away. Um, it's just sometimes, you know, some of them take a little bit longer. But uh, I've challenged them all to have a mindset to come in here and be ready to compete immediately. Look, we'll know early on, if you're standing in the back of the line in the first couple of weeks, um, we'll have a good idea that you're not ready to compete. If you're up front and you're pushing guys to get in and want to rep and you want to get out there, then then let's see what you've got. And, you know, we've had that every year I've been here, right? First year you had a guy like, you know, Will Campbell, uh, Emory Jones. I mean, those guys jumped in right away and, and said, look, uh, I want to compete right away. Um, you know, Caleb Jackson, he said, listen, I'm ready to play right away. Um, so... We'll have that again this year. It's just, are you ready mentally? I'll ask a quick couple to you. Uh, one, um, Weston Davis, yeah. Ori Williams, some of these other linemen you sign are basketball players that are lighter guys, athletic. How good do you feel about kind of the three years of O-line recruiting you've had now? feel really good about it. I think we have guys that can bend, uh, that have light, feet that can move their feet there's a model that we're looking for that we're going to stick with there's a profile if you will whatever word you want to use 
Um, they have to be. Uh, they have to have a really good football IQ. Um, but as you know, and you mentioned, a lot of these guys play basketball. We want them to be agile, have quickness, um, be able to move up and down the court. is is a really good trait for some of these six foot six, six foot seven offensive linemen. So you can see what we're trying to do there in terms of bringing these guys along. Um, so I, I think we've stacked uh, this offensive line to be uh, deep and talented for, uh, for, for years to come. How you doing, Coach? Good, thanks. As far as uh, signing day and everything goes, were there any players that just stood out to you or uh, were there any players that you were kind of surprised by that were, you know, wanting to come and play football for LSU? Um, you know, there's, <laughs> there's so many guys. You know, when you look at this roster, um, you know, watching Aaron Burrell, you know, attempt 62-yard field goals, I mean, uh, and I didn't even know the rule in high school if you – if you kick a field goal and it crosses the end zone, it's a touchback, you know? I mean, things like that, why not kick it every single time, right? I mean, things like that when you have a kicker that's that explosive, um, that that was kind of fun to watch. I mean, I guess there, there's so many guys, but the guy that just keeps jumping out at me in terms of what he accomplished was, you know, Juwan Johnson. I mean, he broke every record. I mean, um, and like you, you watch him and you go, wow, he's going to play this position. And then you watch him again, you go, well, maybe he can play this position. And then you watch him again and you go, no, he, he can play this position. So uh, if any of you guys know what position he, he could play, just let Mike know and, and we'll take it under advisement because he can play anywhere. He's remarkable as a player and he's been fun to watch. And um, you know, there's a lot of guys like that, but, you know, he's done some things here that historically have never been done in the state of Louisiana. It's been, it's kind of been fun to watch. Good? All right. Thank you.